I feel like I was seeing stories of you. Like, were you okay? I So mm, rough way for me to ask that on air, but like <laughs> for someone that, you know, sits on their soapbox and preaches your triggers are your responsibility on this podcast weekly. I have very, very much had to walk that walk for the past two and a half weeks. Okay. Tell me about it. And she goes, isn't it great what happens when you just turn your brain off and let yourself think? So regardless to say, thank you for the break. We're both feeling better. Hi. Hi. I haven't talked to you in so long. I know. So it's been our summer hiatus. As you know, if you follow us on Instagram, we are taking a page out of the French's book, Two but weeks. we're back <laughs> and I haven't caught up with you since then. And so we're catching up live on air here now. Welcome to Thoughts wow. Mayberry. Welcome to the party. I'm coming in hot today. The full moon energy is really shining on me and I'm like coming in hot. Isn't it good that we rescheduled our meeting from Friday to today? Guys. Because I was a mess. <laughs> no, 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 no. I just need to tell them about what happened right before I left for my trip. So right before I left for my trip. Matt and I were like, let's bank a couple of episodes so we <laughs> can still post over the last two weeks. This is what hit us when we were like, we should take a little bit of time off of TMB. We tried to record twice <laughs> and recorded a full episode and yeah. it will never see the light of day. It was no. actually brutal. It was <laughs> like the most boring, anticlimactic thing. Yes. Both of us hit end and we were like, so that was horrible and not going anywhere we and said think, nothing and then we were like you know what we took I think we like slept on it and then like the yeah. next day we were like I think this is a good tell that like our creative juices are fucking fried because yeah I'm just gonna say it I'm just okay. gonna say it talking about my feelings all the time week after week after week after week my brain was fried Meadow's brain was also fried and I feel rejuvenated so thanks. <laughs> so thanks for taking the time off with us guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. I feel, I similarly feel so much better. And okay. I think something we've talked about on here before about, hi, if you're new and listening, we are very much holding that balance between social media and algorithms are a free tool and we're here to build a community. And so how can we access that tool in the best way? And also not releasing crap. That's just like, self-serving or grandiose or not saying anything or not contributing value and diminishing the community and thoughts that we bring. So yeah. regardless to say, thank you for the break. We're both feeling better. Yay. Ding. Um, what did you do this last week? <laughs> oh my God. Just so much. It, mine was not as much as a physical vacation of yours, although uh -huh. I lived vicariously through you, which was wonderful, but a, a big mental vacation like I feel like it just gave me the space to see things differently which bleeds into my unpacking but before I just take it away because I'm assuming you've been offline for two weeks even though it's fucking everywhere I'm sure you have have you seen the whole it ends with us drama yeah have you watched all the no and I've been wanting to talk to you about it I just have not watched all of it so that's why I haven't okay. said anything because you know me I like to have all the information absolutely damn can I give you a little? Can a I give you a little spiel because I've been going yeah. down a rabbit. Tell hole. Tell me the rabbit hole from because top line headline. I'm like, that's a fucking disappointment. Oh, it's real. And you know how I have felt about her from the start ever since she got married on a fucking plantation in South Carolina. I digress. If anyone doesn't know, there's a new movie out called It Ends With Us, which is based on a very very popular book, which I have not read, and it's all about domestic violence and abusive relationships, packaged as a love story. So this movie's coming out and it's the guy from Jane, Jane the, the Virgin. Virgin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he like bought the rights for it and was always really excited. And apparently Trisha Paytas was going to play the main character for a long time. And then she got what? pregnant. So she couldn't, which that would have been good. First of all, I know crazy. Whoa. So he cast Blake Lively. Literally I've, Besides Serena Vanderwoodson, I think she is that character. And I just, she doesn't seem like the nicest human being to me. Granted, I know nothing and it's a celebrity. So who am I to say? I'm just, mm -hmm. have always kind of been like, eh, could care less. So all this drama starts coming out. It's all over the internet. So now I go down a deep rabbit hole. The way that this woman has been marketing this movie 
No, it's the worst PR fail I've ever seen in my life. She literally says, grab your friends, wear your florals, and head to the theater. There's no, apparently at the end of the movie, (laughs) at the end of the movie, apparently there's no resources, no access to information, no call to action, nothing. First of all, that guy, Justin, whatever his name is, who doesn't from Jane the Virgin has not been seen with any of the actors promoting it. Hasn't he been like promoting it quite well? He's been promoting it well. And I guess they have a partner with a a nonprofit or an organization or resource that he's the only one that's been posting about them. But is he the one that made the movie? So shouldn't it have been on him to put those resources at the end as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So people, there's like footage of them filming that's now coming out from people that just witnessed. And it seems like both of them are fighting and both sides it seems like there's anger on both sides, like from other castmates mm-hmm. and the way that behaviors and work styles, I guess, and the things that happened. All this to say, in something wrapped up in so much trauma, how are we still not partnering with mental health professionals to like make sure that this is represented well, even in just like, even if you don't want to do it for the movie, which like, I'm sure they did. They I at bare minimum, I know they had an intimacy coordinator. Obviously. Right? I think so that's at like bare not minimum, legal to that's not. Exactly. So they worked with someone a little bit. But like even in the marketing of this, like how are we not working with professionals? Because it has been so severely tone deaf. The one thing that really got me, I have two TikToks that I'm going to send to you. Maybe we'll like throw them in the description or something if anyone cares at all. Where uh, she's doing a podcast and the interviewer is saying, you know, this touches on a lot of themes that people are, it's really going to hit home for people and their experiences. If someone comes up to you in the street, you know, celebrities get approached all the time. If someone wants to come up to you in the street and like talk about this role and what it means to them in their life, how do you recommend that they approach you? Which I thought was a really beautiful and thoughtful thoughtful question. question. You want to know her answer? Oh God, no. She goes, oh, should I just like give them, share them my location? Do you want like my social security number? I'm a Virgo, so I need all the details. Like, are we talking logistics? Like, do you, do you need me to just like hold your hand through? Like literally goes off, doesn't answer the question and goes off on a whole tangent about like, do people want access to her? And it she's just so, so severely out of touch for a movie that's clearly touching on like so much deep trauma that it's, it's actually mind-blowing to me how someone could be this far removed and yet still like draw on emotion to act through really rough scenes Did and you perhaps see the movie? do a good job no no I have yeah, not I but like I'm curious t- t- even to just be an actor in that role or like get get the role right like you have to put something into those scenes so how are you moving through filming this entire movie with these scenes without like where is that cognitive dissonance not clicking it's so brutal. As an actor who is portraying something like that, like you said, who has to go and channel those emotions, I'm hoping has done some sort of research for the role to right. understand the statistics of DV in the US. Like to be so flippant. Oh, and then is there's even more alarming logistics. I know, I'm cutting you off. I'm so sorry. Then there's no, even no, no, more go. logistics where like she's being interviewed. They're like kind of cross promoting Deadpool sure. at the same time. Cause it's, yeah. Her okay. I saw movie, a little bit about that, which is like so bizarre and weird. And then she even said something about how Ryan Reynolds, like changed one of the scenes and contributed to the script in which a writer responded and said, I never heard that he had gone in a hold of a script and changed it which also, if you look at the timeline, was during the fucking writer strike. So it, there's just there's just a lot of things at play that I find so severely disappointing. So needless to say, if that is a book that touched your heart and you want to see the movie anyway, like let us know how she did in it and we will drop resources below. <laughs> yeah, that's just the part that my is God. like, I'm like, how are we? Okay, again, going back to what you said, 110% you should be consulting. And the thing is, any movie, regardless of the topic, for the totally. most part, granted this is coming from somebody who's never been in a writing room, but like from what I've heard and from like listening to press junkets, there's mm-hmm. some point of like contact with a consultant for whatever it is that you're talking about that is in that room or has totally. been in meetings. And so I'm hard pressed to believe that for a movie of this magnitude, te- dealing with something that's so real and so sensitive and so 
difficult to like portray in a way that because okay sorry before I keep going so I'm assuming that there was some sort of consultant on set or in the writing room that lended their expertise to forming the character that way or maybe you, in Colleen Hoover's research, it formed. I was just gonna say, do you know. think it's just the author? Maybe, think, but I'm just know? like, how, 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 like, who said, like, is it her team? Is it the movie's marketing team? Like, who was like, that's a great idea for, to not be super media trained in your responses for like what we're gonna be talking about? The wrong person, is and I mean the wrong person, as in like someone who's actually lived and experienced this or might be currently living through it listens to an interview and in their head is like well I guess it's not that deep maybe I should stay or think it's romanticized or like thinks that people are making fun whatever it is it it, that can be that can do so much more damage than we can even fathom I can't imagine that many that many gatekeepers and that many people of high level in a room and not one person is like she should be trained to like speak on this properly is fucking wild. Well, and then you see how uncomfortable it makes other people. Cause when she said that, that one, like, do you want my social security number? What did the interview She's sitting next to, I didn't see the whole, I didn't see his response, but she's sitting next to someone else in the movie and his face is like, (gasps) just zoned out, like looks to the side, like so deeply uncomfortable. So other Mm. people are aware of how inappropriate the message is. Cause imagine you have a friend in a bad situation that like can't see outside themselves because it's so hard to see it when you're in it. Or you make the excuses because we know the cycle of abuse happens that way. And then you want to take your friend to a movie. But then, like you said, they're watching all these things and they're like, oh, I'll just put on a floral dress and I guess I'll be fine. It's not that deep. I've been waiting to unpack it with you because it it's is a wild. Shame. I have a it's couple a TikToks I'll send shame. you. And then Chronically Online Girl did a big dive into the drama and you know i like her video essays a lot i think she's a hoot and a holler and she comes from she was raised in a household with a lot of domestic violence so she was like this is very triggering i've read the book i've seen the movie now twice we got to talk about it anyway on that light note okay (laughs) (laughs) roughest transition ever damn um dive into our unpackings sure take it away okay my (laughs) Mental vacation. I made notes because I feel like I was seeing stories of you. Like, were you okay? I so mm, rough way for me to ask that on air, but like, <laughs> okay. Here's literally my my thesis statement of my unpacking. Everything is emotional regulation. All is made easier by creative expression. And remember not to outsource your intuition. Okay. And all of these have been handed to me on a silver platter thanks to mercury retrograde which if you've seen my instagram to which gabby's referring to usually i feel like mercury retrograde because as someone that's like very deeply into astrology i'm like okay cool like be aware of the certain tropes whatever and move on it i I don't think too deeply into it i think a lot of those stuff is a little flippant or whatever yeah so i've gotten my fucking ass handed to me recently and for someone that you know, sits on their soapbox and preaches your triggers are your responsibility on this podcast weekly. I have very, very much had to walk that walk for the past two and a half weeks. Okay. Tell me about it. Oh my God. I mean, first of all, just every trope is hitting me. Like I am miscommunicating every single thing I mean, which also makes it frankly scary to show up for a podcast because you're doing great so far. 16 minutes. Thank you so much. I'm thank you so much. The, the tech issues, the communication, or not the communication, the travel plan, like just everything has kind of hit me like a ton of bricks, but mostly has been a lot of, not even necessarily like triggers in the traditional pop psychology sense, but a lot of active emotions that I have had to regulate through multiple times a day, every day for two and a half weeks. Sorry, I just hit my mic because I was super loud. And I, so to go in order of my thing, emotion regulation, let's start with that. Everything that's been coming up has been a practice of like feeling something intense or being in a mood or having something happen. I've been super irritable and then constantly reminding myself emotions are energy expressing itself and like recognizing what it is and giving it a pathway to move on and then actively rerouting my brain somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And that'll take a second to like, 
sit there, breathe, think about it, and then move my brain the other way. Mm -hmm. And I've had to do that again, multiple times a day, every day for two weeks. And it's interesting because even in that process, Aaron and I have been talking about I don't, just things that happen at work or like a video he sees on world star or like any little interaction we've been witnessing recently. We're mm -hmm. like, isn't it funny how quite literally everything is emotion regulation. Like we see someone cut someone off on the freeway and then get mad and zoom up or try to break check someone. And we're like, if you took three deep breaths, you probably wouldn't put your life in danger. Like just, mm -hmm. it's, it's been these funny little moments of as I'm going through it, I'm witnessing how every reaction or every interaction could use a little bit of breathing room and mm -hmm. a little bit of that emotion regulation to move from reaction to response. And I'm like speaking to myself as much as I'm speaking to other people here. And I've been thankfully before this even happened, I've been back on my meditation game. I think mm -hmm. I told you about this thing. So I redownloaded Headspace mm -hmm. and it's been having me show up more consistently in the morning because I'm a very good nighttime meditator, but not morning meditator. And so having that habit already ingrained during this time, like thank fucking God, because I'm still showing up for that every day. And I think the way we talk not you and I, we, but like a cultural zeitgeist, we mm -hmm. about meditation and mindfulness. Like, yes, it's a tried and true for a reason. Like the research just shows how many beautiful benefits there are to your brain. It can help alleviate anxiety, depression, substance use. It creates emotional awareness, sense of purpose, the whole nine. But also kind of in that Anne Louise way, like I feel like we need to stop being like, yes, meditation and mindfulness as like its own separate entity, because at the end of the day, like this is just the way your brain wants to be interacted with. Like there's a level of disconnect that just having a mindful perspective through your day that is like the baseline of where our brains want to be. So for example, like if we are glued to our computer for work, and then we're listening to a podcast while we cook. And then we're sitting down to watch Netflix while we eat. Like there's there's so much input output. There's so much stimulation mm -hmm. all day long. And I've been really trying to monitor my levels of that. And mm -hmm. as I think about that, I think there's a lot of rhetoric to like, yes, mindfulness and meditation. And I totally do the same thing in terms of it being the good. Do you know what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say? Like yeah. this kind of like coping strategy where I'm like, but honestly, this, this should just be the baseline of how our brains are existing and being interacted with. I think maybe talking about that a little bit more almost destigmatizes it as this like aesthetic holier than thou behavior or action that you can take all the time and more so makes it just mad regular, which is how it should be in order for all of us to just be a little bit kinder in community together and like have interactions that are not mm -hmm. so activating or like me get activated all day long, but have the space to like keep bringing yourself back and keep bringing yourself back and meet yourself in the present moment. So the next time it happens, it's just a little bit easier and easier to go mm -hmm. that way because you're actively practicing it like mm -hmm. a fucking workout or something. Mm -hmm. I completely agree with what you're saying. The first thing that came up for me was, um, Lionsgate portal just happened. Right. Yeah. And yeah. I was like sending all these TikToks to Zoe being like, we gotta do all these things to the portal or whatever. And he was like, heard, totally believes in energy, totally believes in like, you know, if there's a lot of energy working with us, like, let's play with that magic, like whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But he's like, but also like you're manifesting every single day, every single fucking second of your life. So like, if right. I don't on this fucking day, like, am I not going to achieve my dreams? And I was like, of course not. heard. Touche. Heard. Touche, my friend. And so obviously, like, you know, I love playing with that magic. By the way, funniest thing happened to me in the morning. I'll tell you later. Ooh, on the okay. Lionsgate Porter. Well, it was just like, right. Um, Double-edged sword. Because obviously you want to be promoting things like meditation and journaling and whatever. Because we are living in a world right now where technology is just so advanced that we're constantly being stimulated. And our brains get bored so easily. So if you have to market it as like, just as a reminder for people to like right. force them into the habit. I think that's positive, obviously. Same thing with like taking a mindful walk and like not listening to a fucking podcast or like exactly. whatever. Exactly. But I completely agree with you. We're like, it should be our regular state. And I think we forget how much more we can think. Like I was having this conversation with myself exactly. the other day where I was like, this break from being in the Bahamas. So like when I was in Miami, I was working. But when I was in the Bahamas for those four days, like, 
I never opened my computer. I didn't watch Good. one fucking TV show. Good. I barely was on social media. And by the way, like, and I barely read my book. Like, I think I read like a chapter. Wow. And I, none of it was because I was telling myself, don't go on your phone, don't watch TV. I was just like living in present. the moment. And yeah. I was present with my favorite island in the world and yeah. floating in the fucking ocean and connecting with my sister and my mom and my family friends and my stepdad that I hadn't seen in a while. I got back from that trip and I was telling my mom on the phone yesterday, Meadow, like thing after thing after thing after thing has just been like aligning and happening. Yeah. And I was yeah. telling my mom and she goes, isn't it great what happens when you just turn your brain off and let yourself think? And I was like, which by the way is like what every fucking CEO like tells you to do where they're like like the ones that aren't about to like mm -hmm. you know crash from burnout they're mm -hmm. like hey hello you know what I do I schedule time in my day where I don't have meetings and I'm not answering emails because guess what I have to do fucking think well you know who's the biggest advocate for this of all time Jesse Jesse is a friend of the podcast like all he does is talk about intentional time fully off the phone whether it's just his Fridays or like taking, I was texting mm -hmm. him the other day and he was like, I'm offline till Labor Day, after Labor Day. And I was like, yeah, you are. Don't even text me back. Like talk yeah. to me whenever. Yeah. It's, he's such a good role model for that. Yeah. And by the way, like not one moment of that time in the Bahamas was I like, I'm brainstorming. Like it right. just, no, I break. was existing in life. I was existing in life yeah. and I was living in the moment and I was being present and I was so fucking great every every time I stepped into the, the first dip that I took into the ocean I was by myself my mom was like a little bit behind me and I literally was just like had my hands in the water and I was like oh thanks sister like we're back yeah. like toes in the yep. sand like connecting with the ocean and just saying thank you and like when I got back that plane ride back like I remember I was trying to ideate on this project when I was in Miami and I was fried I couldn't yeah. work on the plane nothing creative was coming out of me I was only doing like admin and like deadlines that I had to meet nothing creative was coming out of me and I yeah. got back to LA and it's just like whew, yep. and like been flowing out of me and I was like wow okay reminder to like actually take breaks because I don't need to be in the Bahamas to do that right I, I was mm -hmm. like vicariously living through you in the Bahamas but I was at home going through my same routine every day mm -hmm. but just having the space to be like I'm not working on TMV actively and that little I have so much clarity so mm -hmm. many insights so it it feels the exact same way. And I was listening last night to Sai Swoon had a podcast on her Patreon about input outputs mm -hmm. and that relationship between consuming and creating, mm -hmm. because the other part of my unpacking was that creative expression is just so, so monumental for my mental health. And I think for everyone's mental health, like I started doing morning pages again and the day-to-day -day difference between the day I do morning pages and the day I don't do morning pages and how I show up mm. is just out of this world granted writing is our mediums maybe yours isn't yours being someone listening isn't morning pages but whatever it may be but I think what was so cool about your and I's break and was also reiterated in Sai Soon's podcast was sometimes when we're taking in media even if you were like watching tv or reading on that vacation doing it from a lens of this isn't for me to respond to and create something back to. This is simple enjoyment or like mm -hmm. being really present with how you're consuming something, whether it is just to like witness and enjoy, or if you're looking for education or inspiration and like having that delineation makes it so much clearer as a creative to know, you know, not to analyze and create at the same time and yeah. how to show up and how to consume things and how to put energetic boundaries and we're just bombarded with so much all day long. And it doesn't mean we have to respond to it. But I think mm -hmm. people, one, feel a natural inclination that's like, oh, I have to do something if they're doing something. And two, for you and I specifically in the roles and jobs that we have, I know we can very much feel that way. Like sometimes scrolling on TikTok isn't just being entertained, but it's like watching people and being like, oh, I should show up in that way or I should speak in this way or this is it. So like having that space which is either granted by a fucking break or existing and being present or being mindful or not consuming, whatever it looks like is just the most refreshing thing to your mindset and brain. And you and I are going to offline about this after this public conversation. But what's so cool is I feel so much clearer on my vision. And I think part of that was I outsourced my intuition a little bit that I think maybe we'll save for like a Patreon unpacking because I kind of mm -hmm. want to get into details with it after I talk to you about it, obviously, because mm -hmm. I need to unpack 
privately with my best friend and then go public with it. But I just feel, I don't know. I just feel so much more aligned. And I, I, I don't think I would have had the space to have the download of this clarity without making the fucking space. Well, yeah. Wow. Love of that. course we're aligned even when we're apart, you know? Love that unpacking. That's Thank a good you. one. It feels Thank like you. yours might be similar. Yeah, a little. I think I just, things have been flowing and I've been getting a lot of confirmation and I'm also trying not to like get wrapped up in the needing confirmation to know that I'm on the right path, you know, all totally, that. Totally, But also totally like same. as I take steps forward towards this thing, and by the way, like for people listening, I recognize how fucking annoying it always is for people to be like, I'm working on this secret project and like moving in silence and da 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 I get it. So like, please bear with me because I know that's like, fucking annoying to listen to. I think like as start things to become a, like things are starting to become a little bit more real and I, it's been like, I feel like I'm playing like Fruit Ninja. Do you remember that game? I love that game. I feel like I'm playing Fruit Ninja with like intrusive thoughts <laughs> like all yep, day. Absolutely. Where I'm like, I know I'm aligned. I'm right here. And then it's like, what if you're an idiot? <laughs> like, well, yep. what if you're not actually good at this? Like, Whoop. all of these things that are, like, coming in, I have to just be like, boop. Like, yesterday, I asked out to brainstorm with me for names. And we were, like, going back and forth. And then I, t- I told him. Like, I primed him. And I was like, I I was like, you love me and you care about me. I want you to press me. Because I'm going to have to pitch this to a room of people who don't give a fuck about me. So, absolutely. like, you got to press me on the shit that's, like, that you're finding holes in. And right. so we were like having this conversation and I just get really defensive. Like I get defensive when people press me, even though I'm asking to be pressed. Right. And especially when it's like your own creative idea, you're like, well, of nee, course, nee. of course. And so I'm trying to like explain and like whatever. And then also like see the value in the plot hole. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's actually a plot hole. Like we should work through this. And then like the conversation ended. And I remember feeling like really uncomfortable. And I like was like, I'm going to go take a shower. And I, in the shower was like having all these thoughts and my initial reaction was like, does he not think that I can do this? Like, does he not believe in me? And then I got out of the shower and I like said to him and I was like, you can tell me to fuck off if I'm like 900% projecting. And I explained how I was feeling and he was like, I really don't want to invalidate you, but like you're completely projecting. And I was like, honestly, that's the better answer because I would hope that it's just in my own head and you don't actually think these things. And he's like, at all do I think these things I think you think He's like in fact I was showing up the way you asked me to yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so yeah. then that was a moment where I was like okay there's a little bit of work to like navigate through in terms of totally when I'm when people ask me the question like why me that's mm-hmm. I have to stand and say it with my fucking chest because I believe yeah. it yeah but then there's a little part of me that's like well do you yeah do you Ooh, that's juicy so that's what that I'm is sort a of super moving, juicy unpacking moving through. And the thing is, by the way, it's so easy to make up stories when you don't have all the data. Like the thing hasn't happened yet. I haven't done right. the thing. So I have no idea. Maybe I will fucking suck. Like who knows? But I don't know. So I don't have data. So I'm just making up all of these fucking stories in my brain. And that's what I'm like playing Fruit Ninja against is like the make believe totally. part of it. I love that you went to the shower to figure that out, by the way, because I recently have just been like, God, showers are so self-care. Like the way that I, in the same way you talk about going into the water and feeling baptized, like I will be in the shower and just like go like this and be like, get the energy off of me, (laughs) like cleanse me. It feels so good. And then you can have, bring so much clarity in that. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyway, I love what you are unpacking because I feel like I'm going through something similar granted very different projects, Mm -hmm. but I feel the same thing all the time. Like I was talking to someone the other day about it. I'll just say, I was talking to Danae Logan about Mm -hmm. this big thing that I'm working on. And she said to me, you are the perfect person to do this. And I was like, Mm -hmm. I really needed to hear that from someone like you because you're in the field and you're licensed and I value. And she was like, no, no, no. Like cut all of that. Like you have this unique set of experiences and like you are the person to do this idea And I feel like I'm holding a mirror to you as I'm saying this. And it's like, if some people don't see that, then maybe they don't see the vision in general. Or like you said, like maybe you need data to find out the way in which this idea can form and morph to be exactly Mm -hmm. the thing that you need to be the messenger for. I just think Mm -hmm. it's so, so cool to watch you move through this in a way that you've just been speaking about this for so long and granted your beginning of the year unpacking of like I was journaling about my feelings for two years and now I'm acting I've watched you act for eight months 
And it's really exciting and fun to watch and frankly, motivating. I feel like the more you move, it helps me. I mean, the only reason I've been working out for two months is because of you. Like, working out has really been the catalyst for this. Let me just tell you. I did a, I did an 8 a.m. Pilates today with my friend. It was great. Shut up. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. It was fun. Fun and fit era, which someone asked us to unpack our fun and fit era. So maybe at another time. Yeah. We can do that too. But Fuck. I was going to say something that you just brought up. Oh, okay. I think this is just also another way of saying – you know when people on TikTok will be like, just make the video. Just make the video. Right, just post right. the video. I think this has also been a really big reminder when what you were saying. Not everybody is going to get it. And not everybody is going to get it, especially when you have not had a proof of concept for it. Whether the proof of concept right. is the video that you posted on TikTok, the YouTube thing, you presenting a marketing strategy at your job, like whatever it is, sometimes you just have to show people because they can't see what's inside your brain. Because sometimes we're so close to the thing that we mm-hmm. see it perfectly. So when we explained it, this was happening to Zoe and I was explaining it and he was pressing me. I was like, why the fuck do you not get it? And then I'm like, it's oh, like, cause, cause your nose is pressed to the planing, the painting. Yeah, and also not, by the way, like yeah. that's a really good example of like, I need to do a better job of explaining it. Totally. And not totally. only do I need to do a better job of explaining it, I need to do what I'm in the process of doing, which is actually like making the thing yeah. So that like there's – you can see it. You don't have to guess. Yeah. I'm t- I'm showing you exactly what this is going to look like. Yeah. So that there's no space for imagination for you to be like, yeah, I don't get it. No, no, I'm showing you. So for I just think about that as applicable to anybody where it's like just – whatever the thing is, just do it. Just do it. Right. You'll have more data. People will understand it more. Like you'll now figure out if that's how you want to move, if that's what makes you feel good. But just like begin because sitting – and just waiting and contemplating is such a fucking form of hell that we put ourselves in mm-hmm. that I sat through Before for years. Yeah. And you're just yeah. like there and you're like, well, this sucks. You're not living life. Make a decision. This is what I – Move. This Exactly. Exactly. This is what I mean when I say everything is creative expression. Like having – And I don't mean it in like everyone has to be an artist or your idea or concept has to be creative. But even if you just show up for morning pages, even in the way you put on an outfit during the day, like having something to experience life around you, distill through your own vessel and express something with it, even if it's working out and showing up to working out, like whatever, whatever the Mm -hmm. product may be, or if it's a TikTok, whatever, like oh my God, does that just move us from self-awareness hell to aligned action, whatever that may be? Mm-hmm. Like it, have you watched those videos I sent you over the weekend yet? No. The, okay, so for anyone, no, the YouTube videos I texted you. Oh, no. With Priya? No. No? Okay, that's fine. I'll tell Did you I about respond? them later. But I'm like, I don't even know. No, you didn't, but I, okay, I'm sorry. I was, it was over the weekend, so I <laughs> okay. didn't expect you to. But um, I'll tell, I have more details to say about it that I'll tell you offline, but- there's this girl named Priya Krishna who's like OG Bon Appetit and now has, mm-hmm. she has an amazing cookbook that I have. So she has a New York Times video series called On the Job. And I watched a couple of videos over the weekend. And one was about a guy from Puerto Rico who now works at a coffee shop in Grand Central Station. Mm-hmm. And the other one was about a dishwasher at like a top restaurant in Brooklyn. Okay. And just the way that Wait, these two men. Idea. No, you're going to, I, you see why I was texting mm-hmm. it to you this weekend. The way that these two men showed up for their jobs and their attitude and their like, like the, it, everything is expression. Like the way that this guy makes coffee, interacts with other people, understands that like his whole job, at least for the coffee guy, his whole job is setting up the start of someone's day pre-coffee mm. before work in the most like High, high stakes environment. What, the, what I think in the video, it says 750,000 people move through Grand Central Station Grand every Central day. Grand Central Station is one of the worst places I've ever walked through. So I can exactly. imagine. So imagine that. giving all of those people every single morning their coffee before they've had their coffee. It's called Cafe yeah. Grumpy for a reason. I think it's fucking hilarious. Oh, but the yeah. way that this. Yeah. Okay. So his, his yeah. name's Arnaldo and he works at Cafe Grumpy. And he went through Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico and was like mm-hmm. a great barista. And so they brought him over here. And the, just wow. the way that he shows up as a person interacting with people and for the craft of coffee while moving quickly, while being like everything to me is creative expression. And that's what gives people meaning. And he was talking so much about personal success and how people view this job as like a flippant job to have during your college years, where he was saying like, 
the heart of this is community and expression and like being with people and starting someone's morning. And it's such a beautiful industry to be in. And I wish people took it more seriously and saw it that way. And the same way that this dishwasher shows up for his job, the way he interacts, like it's just when you, when you treat things with reverence and you treat things Mm -hmm. like an expression and you treat things like that, it just makes you move differently and gives you so much sense of purpose and meaning and happiness. Mm -hmm. It's been on my mind constantly. Grant, it just, I can't stop talking about it. Creative expression is my everything. Mm, I can't wait to watch that show. That's such a good series. You are going to love it. It is extremely well done. She just, she's so you in storytelling to me where she just gets to the heart of people Mm. and like tells the story behind the story. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 You're going to, you're going to really, really vibe with it. Oh, thanks. Okay. Fun. Yeah. This was a good unpacking. This was a great unpacking. I'm so excited to catch up with you more. We're about to go to Patreon because your girls finished Gilmore Girls. <laughs> Another she harsh transition. Did it. And um, I have a lot to say about it. I also want to unpack this whole outsourcing intuition thing with you. Maybe that'll have to be a separate Patreon episode because sure. I want to get into like the details about it because I think it's interesting. We've talked about it before a little bit, but I feel like I have fun updates mm-hmm. there too. Wow. Oh, well, it's nice to be back with you. High five. How's it going, y'all? It's Aaron. Don't let your Monday suck. Don't have those Sunday scaries. I'm tired of everybody waking up in the week saying, ah, shit, it's Monday. You know what goes down? TMV releases every week on Mondays. Make sure you rate and review wherever you get your podcasts. And if you're watching YouTube, yes, TMV has a YouTube. Be sure to subscribe and ring that noti bell and never miss a thing. And also, join the TMV Familia by joining the Thoughts May Vary Patreon and by following at Thoughts May Vary Pod on Instagram and TikTok. Thank you for listening. There you go. Got y'all.